The, this thing's been going on for like 2,000 years, guys. Yeah. Right. There's been a lot of people living out discipleship that have died, gone on to glory, and have been rooting you on right now. Whoa. Come on, bro. Cheering you on. Amen. Say, come on, you can conquer that. Come on, bro. Yeah. Man, keep going, keep pushing. Amen. Turn with me to Hebrews 12. Let's go on. Hebrews 12. You know, today was an awesome day. We had uh, four Bible studies lined up, and uh, it was awesome. They were, we, Tony and I showed up to campus, and they were just back to back to back. Wow. And uh, it was great to have uh, Christian in one of them and Marshall in them. Yes, sir. Uh, it's really cool to see God working in these people's lives. Come on, God. Dream and think about man, God's gonna blow up this campus right here. And all these guys are gonna get baptized. And, uh, we're excited. We had a really good talk with uh, Kaz and went on a prayer time for him. And you know, UP is beautiful, so you can just pray over looking the water. It was phenomenal. And by the end of the prayer, we looked at Hebrews 12 about hardship. Then we looked at Matthew 28, and we challenged them to go after becoming a disciple in the next week. He said, I'm all in. Let's go after it. So we'll pray for Kaz right there. Amen? Amen. But I was thinking about it in Hebrews 12 and verse 1, but the very end of verse 1, it says, And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The title of tonight's lesson is The Race Marked Out for Us. Amen. You know, there's many examples in scriptures, uh, and, and oftentimes we see throughout the Bible that we as Christians can get compared, or it's described kind of in athletic terms, mm -hmm. and, and the, describes the athletic or the uh, the Christian walk in some athletic terms. And I started to think, man, sports are so popular in our generation, yeah. Oh, yeah. but they were even popular in the first century. Yep. Yeah, right. True. People looked up to them then. And I started thinking, man, what is it about sports that, that excite us? Like, what is it about sports that inspire us so much? Come on. Like, we can watch it, and it can be so intense, we want to jump up and throw our popcorn all over the place. Yeah. Right? It's something that just pulls us in. You know, I think one of the most exciting sport experiences I've ever seen was the Patriots Falcon game back in 2017. Oh. And, you know, they, they, they overcame a 25-point deficit. It, it's 21-0 late in the second, second quarter right there. Right? Like, oh, my goodness. And being a Patriot fan, I was not very happy that day. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, this is not a good Super Bowl at all. But, man, like, God calls disciples to have an attitude like an athlete. He calls you to have an attitude. And I started to think, man, what does that mean? Like, what does the attitude of an athlete even look come on, like? Tell us. Yeah, come on, come right? I started to think about, man, the level of commitment athletes have towards their sport. Right. Right? I just started to think about it. Like, you're you're not on a team if you're casual all the time. Right? Oh, yeah. Right? Unless you're on the team just to bring water to the players. Right. But you're really, you're really, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're not all... Like, you know, if you're intense about your job, you think about it in the football field. They have a they have somebody on the field that's there to help make sure the coach doesn't walk too far onto the field. Right. You watch him, he's intense about his job. He's just following the coach the whole way. I hope my man's not even watching the game. Like, I'd be distracted, you know? But, like, I just think of the level of commitment that goes into that. Right. I think about the level of perseverance that goes into an athlete. Man, there's days they don't want to practice. It's hard. They're tired. Like this is just man. We went into overtime again. Like this is ridiculous. Like I just want to throw in the towel, right? The hard work mentality. See, we're off and we're running. God's calling us to run the race that's marked out for you. But to not walk, not to drag your feet. It's not a casual stroll. He says, run it. Right? And, and we're off and we're running in a spiritual marathon. And each day presents new challenges as we run this race, right? <laughs> but do you realize God's provided the path that you're supposed to run? Wow. Come He's on. already provided it. He's provided the path. God shows us exactly how we're called to run this race that is set before us. See, so you're not running in the dark. You're not running through the woods trying to figure out how to make the path. 
Mm. He's, he's just calling you to run the path that he's already marked out for you. Right. Come on. Look back in the beginning of chapter, or verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, mm. and then let us run the race. Mm. With, run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Mm. Point number one is you have fans in the stands. That's awesome. You got fans in the stands. You guys, from, from the start of the race, you have to remember you're not alone. You are not alone. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, you might feel like you're alone, but there are a cloud of witnesses watching you run this race. I, you know, you think about it. Like, you have Olympic sprinters... They burst from the starting blocks, running for victory, striving to be the gold medalist. And they're in this huge arena filled with spectators just to watch them run. You know, for an athlete looking up into the stands, just full of just colorful clothes and moving people, yelling fans, it looks somewhat like looking up to, into a, a crowd of clouds. Yeah. yeah. Like, the, it says that you have fans in the stands cheering you on as you're running this race in your walk with God. Nice. You're, you're run with God. Amen? We're gonna Amen. Amen. That now. You're run with God. <laughs> See, the race would be so much different. Can you imagine being an Olympic athlete and having no fans in the stands? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone said that in, in the, like, when it was COVID, in the bubble, they said, man, that was so silly. Like, nobody counts LeBron's title in the oh, bubble. Come on. Right. Oh, that's a ring. That's, that's a ring. ring. That's, that's a ring. ring. That's that's ring. That's yeah, 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 it's a ring with a lowercase r. Yeah. But, like, you think about it, it was just weird. They, they had people on the screen oh, yeah. being zoomed in. You can, you can buy a zoom link. Like, woo! Like, let's go. Like, oh, yeah. But can you imagine running a race and having nobody there? Nope. No, no fans in the stands. No encouragement. No encouragement. Yeah, it would be like crickets. You'd pour yourself out. You'd win. And you'd want to celebrate, but you'd be like, oh, what do I, do? I don't know what to do. I feel bad rubbing it in now. I just beat everyone, right? <laughs> like, the stands, you got to understand, in this race, are filled with disciples. Um, filled um, with men and women of God that are rooting you on as well. They're filled with, the, the stands are filled with those who have run before us. <clears throat> you know, we're not the only ones to take this journey. Sometimes we feel like we are. Yeah. This, the, this thing's been going on for like 2,000 years, guys. Yeah. Right. There's been a lot of people living out discipleship that have died, gone on to glory, and have been rooting you on right now. Wow. Come on, bro. Cheering you on. Amen. Saying, come on, you can conquer that. Come on, bro. Yeah. Man, keep going, keep pushing. Yeah. And they're cheering you on. Come on, Preston. You know, Hebrews 11, you take time to read through Hebrews 11, 11 it's all about faith. We, we call it the hall of faith. Oh, yeah. Right? Because it's our spiritual ancestors, such as Abraham and Noah, who answered God's call. <laughs> and were set out, and they, they, they raced the race that was set before them. And their example gives us so much encouragement. We look at their lives, we look at the race that they ran, and we can learn from it. We can get inspired by it. And you got to understand that they're, they're with God, and they're looking down, and they're cheering you on. Man. They're rooting for you. They're like, man, I can't wait. I, I can't wait till Owa gets here, man. He's on my team. Come on, Owa. He's on my team. Come on, team. Come on here. Right? Like, like, they're just inspired. They're watching you. They're excited. They're like, man, I can't wait till Chase just keeps getting stronger, bro. He's going to do incredible things. Chase. Right? Watch, watch Nate when he comes alive. He's going to start a bunch of people. Right? They're, going to, they're, going to, they're rooting them all, you on. But we have to look back to, sometimes we, have, we think we have to look back to find these heroes of faith. But you don't have to look back very far. I think what's cool is you can find some in our ministry today. True. Yeah. We, we have this, some, some incredible disciples in the Portland Church. God has blessed us with some phenomenal disciples in the Portland Church. Right? We're, we as disciples, we're meant to make this journey and do it together. Right? We're, we're much stronger when we do it together. 
Seeing powerfully, you know, seeing powerful examples of faithfulness always gives you courage. Yeah. yeah. When you see somebody else get get just our courage, they're bold, they're faithful, it always gives you courage. You know what's inspiring it is we had a dear sister in the campus that was just wrestling, struggling, not sure if man I can do this anymore. Mm-hmm. One good talk with a shepherd, one good talk with Shauna, hanging out with some of the sisters, yeah. just walking with them, not even sharing her faith. Walking with them and seeing how people share their faith. She's now out and about sharing her faith all over by herself. <laughs> And I just, I, I just started to think, man, that's what courage does. That's what the example's all about. When someone else is courageous, it makes you courageous. Like, people can sense that there's a light in you when you let it shine. Right? Kaz went through some really hard stuff in the last 24 hours. He didn't call his mom. He didn't call his dad. He called, he called Marshall, and then he called me. Oh, He's like, yo, I need help. He called disciples. He oh, knows yes. for four days. Four days. Oh, and he's like, I need help. This is the situation. I'm in a bad spot. <laughs> and, I, and it was awesome because I was like, I, I was asleep. So Marshall did it. Praise God, Marshall was up late. Yeah. 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 Praise God, he wasn't going to bed until before 1 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it was so cool that I just thought, once people see your light, man, they want to get in touch. Yeah. They, wanna, they, they just re- he realized there's no one else I can run to. I've got to go to these guys. Yeah. Yeah. And he's starting to see the difference between like what the world has to offer and what the kingdom <coughs> has to offer. Come on, Preston, preach it. But guys, we, we got to see that when there's powerful examples of faithfulness, it always gives us courage. Who, who just honestly... Sit down, take some time to think about it. Who in the church here in Portland inspires you? I, I know, I know Kip inspires you, and John inspires you, and Michael Williams seems crazy, and Ricky's phenomenal. And I know we have some incredible men around the world. But, but who, who just in this house is inspiring? Who do you look to? Whose faith, whose courage, whose lifestyle? Just pick somebody and go, man, I, I want this quality in their character. I, I want this this in their relationship with God. I, man, that's what I love. I want this and that. I love looking up to that. I love running the race with this person or that person. Yeah. Turn me to 1 Corinthians 4. Come on, Tone. Come on, Tone inspiring everyone, bro. Oh, it's inspiring ever. He got up there at the, the basketball court today at UP, started inspiring a lot of people. <laughs> they were like, yo, what, what, what class you in, bro? You want to play on my intramural team? I said, like, nah, bro, I can't play on your intramural team right here. I'm already on another team. We baptizing people. Yes, sir. First Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Come on, bro. It, it says right here, it says, for this reason I'm sending to you, Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. You know, sometimes, you know, however, other problems can keep us from running our race, even when our crowd is cheering us up. Sometimes we have problems in our lives, and there's things that we don't always fully understand or grasp. The Bible, in Hebrews 12, it says, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. There's so many sometimes things in our lives that can really slow us down, and we need people to come into our lives and to encourage and then teach us to get out of that. Paul realized, man, the Corinth church got some things wrong with it. I need to send Timothy down there to fix some things up. Right? And Timothy had to come down to just encourage and then teach and correct. Because what happens is sometimes we get so entangled, which I think is interesting. It says the sin that so easily entangles... um, and other things that hinder. So there's things that can hinder you that not, aren't, aren't necessarily sin. Mm-hmm. Like there's things in your life that are hindering you from being right. the best disciple you true. Yeah. to run Very this race true. freely that's not necessarily sin. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It, it's kind of like what's better and best. Like you can run a race with like a 40 pound backpack on, but it's going to hinder you. Yeah. You can do it if you want though. Yeah. But it's gonna slow you. It's gonna hurt. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna hurt. But if you take yeah. it off, you might run a little better. Yep. You might do this a little easier. Like, honestly, is that what? What start your? It's only January. What in your life is hindering you from being the best disciple you can be? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily sin. What is hindering you? Now, if you got sin. That sin is entangling. Yes. Mm. It's just insane. Have you ever try to run through a forest of just branches and vines? Right. You're not going far at all. Yeah. Yeah. At all. Right. 
Right? I used to have this house, and in the back of the house, there was a bunch of vines. You couldn't get to the next door neighbor's house. Right? And then, never mind, I'll tell you the story another time. But there was an incredible situation, and an interesting situation, and people had to run one way. And they just got ripped up. They got cut up. I remember seeing people the next day, and they're, they're literally cut from head to toe. I was like, what happened? They're like, we had to take off. And we tried to go through the woods, and we couldn't get through the woods. I was like, oh my goodness. But I think, like, that's exactly what we look like when we try to run with sin in our life. Come on. We just have to cut up head to toe, and then we start wondering why the race isn't fun anymore. Like, nobody wants to run. I don't want to run this race. This is hard. Like, of course it's hard. You keep cutting yourself. Right. Right? We, we have to understand, though, we got people cheering you on. You have, there are fans. We got to do a better job too at rooting each, rooting each other on. Yeah, come on, uh, man. do the. I, I know we keep saying wrestling. we have fans in the stands, but are you a fan in your person's stands? Yeah, yeah, man. Man. That's a good point. Do you root on your Bible talk? Are you cheering them on? Are you, are, as the Bible talk leader, are you their biggest fan? Wow. Do they know you're your biggest fan? Are the people you disciple, do they know you're you're you're, 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 you're you're a big fan in their life? That you're excited to see the progress, excited to help them grow. You're you're fired up for them. On, we have Gordon. to become those fans in the stands. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's continually create that atmosphere. <laughs> Let's just keep pumping in the good news, lifting each other up, pumping each, up, each other up to do great things. Yeah. Not, not just emotional and do it with like an emotional high, but really giving yeah. each other courage and deep conviction to do things. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, as that leads us into point number two, we got to throw and don't tow our sin. Okay. It says throw... Your sin off. There we go. Amen. Standards, amen? amen. You know, I you guys ever watch some like sometimes I get I get locked in on like YouTube funny videos. I just I, I, I like when, when me and Malik and a few of the brothers used to live in the brothers' house in Boston, I used to fall asleep listening to comedy. Like it was just I used to die laughing. Me and Brian would be in the same room and we'd just start crying because we'd be laughing so hard. But I, I love a good laugh. And I hate to laugh at other people's uh, pain at times, but you guys ever watch those videos when people just like hit that block of ice? Like this dude's parked in his truck and he's just got his video on and everyone just seems to hit that same patch of ice. Oh, like, and, and when people hit it and they just, they just fall and they fall and they fall and it's so bad and people are hanging in. They're trying to do everything they can and it looks like it hurts so bad. And I'm like, man, why doesn't this guy just tell people? He's just sitting there and he's eating it up. He's loving it. Right? Back, you know, in Hebrews 12, it says we got to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. You know, in sporting events of the first century, competitors usually ran in much more of a, a natural way than athletes do today. Right? They didn't have the Nikes and the short shorts and the, the onesie or whatever, right? They didn't, they didn't have all of those things. Right? They had... They, 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 long before the days of these special sprinting attires, right, the clothes of the time either had to be tied up away from the legs or they were taken off before they went out and ran. Otherwise, the runner would be tangled up and they'd fall on their face. As disciples, our race isn't much different. Right? We can't run very well if we're bound up in these patterns of a sinful living. Right? You can't. Things that seem to satisf so satisfying in the moment can take our eyes off of the real prize. They, they can keep us fixated on these temporary fills, and we're, we're called to be on a better path mm. than this sin. Right. Come on, man. Check out Romans 8. Come on, Rob. Come on, Romans. Verse 13. Verse 13. It says, For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. Ooh, yeah. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds yeah. of the body, yeah. you will live. You know, disciples shine when we follow God's Word. Yeah. We shine when we obey His commands. Right? He didn't give us these commands to just trap us. He, he gave them to free us. Yes. To run our race with endurance. See, he gave it so that we could be well-equipped and not grow weary in the run. Yeah. Sometimes we think, man, these things are, are limiting me. But it's the sin that limits you. Yep. That's what slows you down. Right? Right? Like being on a, a, like if you're training for something and being on a healthy diet, yeah, yeah, you could consider it limiting, but it's actually helping you be better. 
But it's just perspective. It's how you look at these things. Yeah. Way too many people see the Bible and they're like, that's going to limit me. Yeah. Oh, no, it's no. like, yeah, that's true. No. You could just go out and eat Krispy Kreme every day, but it's not going to help you. Right. No. <laughs> right. So either you can look at that as limiting or helping. Right. But it's all perspective. Sometimes we look at it like you're, you're keeping me from Focus. having fun. Trust me, you're going to have a blast. Yeah. When, you, when you let God set you free. Mm -hmm. And you run the race that's marked out for you the way he's had it marked out for you. Come on, Sean. See, when we do so, our true goal starts to come into view. When we run it the way God has us designed to run it, you can see the real prize. Amen. You can see what really matters ahead of you. Yeah. You can say passion. You can hear about people sharing, man, I, I, Jeff, I want to baptize somebody. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that when your vision's blurry and you start thinking about all these things you're entangled in. Yeah. Right? You can be like, yeah, I want to baptize somebody. You don't really want to baptize somebody, right? No. You want to go home, you want to play the video game, you want to call in the sin, you want to try to say the same thing tomorrow. Right? But when you're right with God and you're, you're not entangled in this stuff, you get focused, you know, you get hungry. Right? You know what's cool is like when you start to see like that onion peel in a disciple's life and they start to come alive. Mm. And you can tell just by the little bit yeah. different yeah. like dialogue in their language, right? It was, it's great having Marshall back from Guam, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I don't know what he heard on Sunday, but I know we went out for food. And he said, bro, we got to talk. I said, yeah, what's up? You know, whenever someone's like, yo, we got to talk, you never know it's yeah, good right, or bad. Right. So, yeah, what's up? He said, bro, I, I, I want to get locked in on the contribution. I, I gotta get, I'm going to get consistent. I want to talk to you. I'm working now at school. This is what I was thinking about my plan. Oh, yeah. I said, bro, that's great. All right. awesome. And then I was like, and then I, we that. shared some, I some ideas about, hey, we got some Bible studies this week. He's like, bro, I, I want to be at the Bible studies. I want to get my Bible studies better, too. I want to get more on top of the Bible study. I said, oh, okay. Okay, okay. okay. Marshall, right there. Oh, and then he started following up with Kaz, and he said Whoa. this. You know, I was like, hey, good. maybe you can just send your quiet time what you, you know, being a younger disciple, he's only, I, I was like, oh, you're like nine months now? He's like, no, I'm only like three months. I said, oh, my gosh. That's, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were a little older. <laughs> three months old. I was like, hey, send your quiet time. I thought, you know, give him some no, grace. I'll send something little and like, hey, this is what I got. He sent like this big hold on. I got this. This is what it means. This is what oh, I got from it. This is how I'm applying it. What did you do? Know? And I was like, Marshall. Dang, I better send something good too. <laughs> he just went in. He's like, "Sorry, is it too long?" I said, "No, that was excellent." But what I started, I started getting excited about, like, man, the like, onions like peeling back. He's coming alive, like, because I truly do. I, I really believe Marshall can impact a lot of young men at UP. I believe Christians can impact a lot of young men at UP. But it's, it's not, it's not going to, they're not going to impact anybody if they're just sitting there entangled and hindered their whole life. Come on, they're not even going to find this fun anymore, right? But they start to come alive when they're not hindered and they're not entangled and they're, they're really fighting for their relationship. They're focused. On the right things. Amen? Amen. Yes. Which leads me to my last point. Turn me to Hebrews chapter 12 again. Come on, point number three is focus your eyes and get the prize. Nice. That's Come on, guys. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You know, while we may glance at the crowd of witnesses around us at times, and we may throw off the things that tangle us, our goal is on the prize. Right? At the beginning of the race, the prize, may, the prize may seem like super far away. It may feel like, man, that's super away in the distance. But we know... Through, of him through studying that we know God, we know the prize, we know the great reward through studying the word of God. Right? That's why we need to invite more people to study the Bible so that they can see the great prize that is waiting for them. So that they can then hop on board and start running the race with us. Yeah, it's like you're running a marathon, but you have to recruit people to finish the marathon with you. Yeah. Right? And sometimes we don't want to, like, like, man, I've been running 10 miles. I don't want to... I'm tired. I don't want to pull somebody in with me for the rest of this race. But that's what the whole goal is. Yeah. To the very end, we just want to... And somebody might join you for the last leg, that last one mile. Yeah. Yeah. But you got them in the race. Yeah. Mm. And they were able to finish strong. Mm. You know, before long, we realize that the prize awaiting us is always meant for not just us, but all the others that we invited right. along with us. Yes. See, Jesus isn't content for us to just sit and watch from the finish line. 
right? There, there's no journalists in the kingdom of God. Right? You're not you're not taking notes about how other people are running. You're not writing papers on someone else's race. You have to run your race, and you have to run the race that God has marked out for you. Check out Philippians chapter three. Okay. Now, how's it been going really running the race marked out for you? Philippians 3, verse 10. I want to know Christ. Paul's writing this. 20 years as a Christian. I want to know Christ. The power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Becoming like him in his death. And so somehow, to attaining the resurrection from the dead. You know, as we run and we keep our eyes on Jesus, God works on us. He, he's making us more and more like his son. But you have to keep desiring to become more and more like his son. 20 years after living the faith, Paul is still like, man, I just want to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, you don't know him yet? <laughs> bro, I want to know him so good that somehow we're like understanding his death and obtaining like a resurrection like his. It's like, oh, you really want to know him. Like, this is 20 years in. And what's cool is that he's going to bring us to our long-awaited reward as we keep pushing on. But you got to press on towards the goal to win the prize. You know, verse 14, we all know this one well, but it says, I, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. See, Paul went through some hardships. He wanted to quit. He wanted to give up. He lost friends on the battlefield. He was persecuted. He was beaten. He was stripped naked. He was put in jail. He was abandoned out at sea and shipwrecked. Like, and yet he pressed on. He pressed on. He, he, he pressed on. He pushed. He had perseverance. He worked hard. He didn't quit. He was alone at times. He's like, God's with me. Angels in heaven are cheering me on. Man, I just think about Jesus cheering me on. Not to quit. And he kept fighting the fight. You know, the greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. Uh, 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 what? By <laughs> See, that says a lot. That says a lot. He says, he was quoted once saying, I didn't come this far to only come this far. So we still got further to go. He said that you push your body to the limits, but you have to train your body to then deal with those limits. So that's who we need to be. We need to learn to push our body to the limits and then train ourselves to then deal with those limits and then push ourselves to another set of limits and then learn to deal with those limits. Yep. And keep pushing yourself to become more excellent and better and in in have great progress in your life as a disciple. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we settle, like we get in the rhythm of like, man, this is kind of like the rhythm of discipleship. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I'm so... I'm so grateful. It's so it's so funny how things work out. Like I'm so grateful. Craig and Keisha just moved on back up here to uh, Fort Lee. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, you know they dove in and they started the first Bible talk on the east side, right? Or kind of the east side, right? Adopted, adopted east side, right? Um, it's got east side people, am I? And uh, and. Uh, and I was excited because it's not just like, man, I was really fired up just to know they're going to work in to uh, help and lift up the Grant's arms, get in there and help lead a great Bible talk. But man, the amount of <coughs> that we have a great shepherding conclave uh, chat and just all about situations that are going on. I sent out a message and within seconds, Keisha sends back like a book and she's like, <laughs> everyone that's on this list covered. And I didn't, I didn't even know. I was like, Hey, this situation, I'm concerned about this, 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 this. He's just like, did this for this person. This person's doing this. This person's doing that. I was like, oh my. They're all over it. Come on now. And I just, man, they're that's pouring cool. their hearts out into the people. Yeah, that's awesome. But what I love is like, they're not settling just for their Bible talk. They're not settling just for one limit. They're, they're constantly pushing themselves, getting out, going, taking themselves to another level. That's the same mindset we're called to have as disciples. That's right. You know, I, I, I think about, uh, obviously I'm lifting them up. They're our baby disciples. But I think about Christian and Marshall. I think about Nate. Like, these guys out there, and they're evangelizing. And they're in, they're, their lifestyle is impacting those around them. The, the words they're sharing are impacting those around them. God's using them to open the door to many more men who are studying the Bible. 
right? Many more. Crews would not be studying the Bible if it wasn't for Christian. That's just the reality. Right? He would not have learned what it meant to be a true disciple, what the kingdom of God is. He wouldn't have shared his faith with them all that day, right? He, he, he's denying himself <laughs> the days, right? We had a good talk about learning to deny yourself. He's like, hey, man, I'm 13. I'm going to deny myself. Right? But, but you know, I started thinking about these guys and the impact they're already having. And it, I'm inspired because they started to run the race. And they're running in it with all their hearts. You know, Forrest Gump, when he started running at first, it wasn't too interesting. When he first started running, ain't nobody interested. Nobody was watching. Nobody was intrigued. Nobody wanted to run with him. But because Forrest Gump never gave up, the whole world got intrigued. And the whole world wanted to follow. And people started to run with him. And each of us can find the race marked out for us in the Bible. But we have to run it. And we have to watch God bring in a harvest, but all for his glory. So make sure you run the race that's marked out for you and to God be all the glory. Amen. Amen.